Hello and welcome to the 2022 Granger Show. My name is Aaron Woody. I'm a commercial strategy manager with the Flu Corporation. And today I'm here to talk to you about innovation promoting energy sustainability. What is energy sustainability? Well, to Fluke, we look at energy sustainability as the ability to reduce a use of electricity or the intensity of electricity that then can manifest into a lower carbon footprint as we uh, create less or need to create less electricity uh, at the utility. So uh, for sustainability, we are uh, going to avoid the depletion of our natural resources um, to provide an ecological balance. Uh, this energy sustainability is to essentially um, avoid committing unneeded energy to complete those tasks. We want to avoid wasting as much energy as possible. And, you know, we throw around the term corporate governance a lot. Um, really, that is just a way for us to meet that sustainability goal through changes in equipment and processes uh, that can decommit that need for that energy. So you might translate that as uh, my boss has told me uh, we need to do X over a wide period of time, and you might not really know where to start. Well, uh, hopefully Fluke uh, can kind of introduce you to what you might want to do uh, today and um, give you some good ideas moving forward. So the key product categories uh, we're going to investigate today are uh, power and energy logging, um, our acoustic imaging, uh, new to market uh, devices here in the last couple of years, and thermal imaging, uh, which we've had out for quite a while, and our uh, mechanical maintenance tools, which would include vibration and alignment. So where are the places we want to look for energy waste? Uh, really, the top places tend to be uh, our lighting, compressed air, uh, and steam systems. They typically, uh, compressed air and compressed steam, uh, usually take the most amount of power to generate uh, and typically are considered the most valuable in a lot of processes. Uh, additionally, HVAC, um, motors and drives, air handling equipment, uh, generic uh, VFDs uh, can be uh, a secondary uh, waster of energy or user of energy. Uh, and then we go into building envelope um, and really the electric utility IT and computers. Uh, and while they might be using quite a bit of energy, uh, we kind of rank them in that third level because they typically it's hard to um, it's hard to mitigate any waste there or there's or little waste. Uh, you might just be a large consumer. So how do we go about making tools um, and how do we go about uh, looking at energy sustainability and energy waste? Well, really, the first thing is we need to know what our benchmark is. Where are we starting with? What is our jumping off point? Um, so really to understand that we need to be able to tell how much electricity we're using. And while you can refer to your electricity bill, uh, to get a good idea, um, sometimes it's very hard if you're in a large facility or you've got a lot of uh, different uh, components to really decide what, where exactly am I using the most energy uh, and how can we um, how can we mitigate uh, some of uh, that excess energy waste. So what we've introduced is uh, Fluke's always had three phase uh, power quality analyzers that tell you what's wrong with your power. Well. Uh, many years ago, we introduced what we refer to as energy loggers. These are very, very simple to use. Very, uh, They're a little bit slower, not as uh, complex, uh, much easier to set up, and they are primarily looking at consumption of energy. So uh, you're basically able to answer two questions. How much am I using and what's wrong with it? Uh, pretty much all of the quality analyzers can do consumption work, but the lower end tools uh, we have on here, the 1738, uh, is really equipped to be a consumption or energy logger first and then find low level quality problems, whereas the 1777, the new tool, is a full blown in analyzer uh, that can record transients at up to two, uh, 20 megahertz. So very, very quick, really catches everything. But uh, these are two tools that you can use to uh, benchmark what your power consumption is and look for ways uh, to cut down on it. So a good example of how how we might do this in real life. Uh, here's an example at a county courthouse, just your typical uh, county courthouse. You know, a lot of activity in the mornings and at lunchtime, uh, and they were finding that they were um, hitting, uh, going through their peak demand um, 
phase uh, in the afternoons. And the initial theory was, you know, a lot of elevator use, microwaves in the um, in the cafeteria uh, was in was basically pushing that uh, that demand up uh, into an area where they were paying um, multipliers. Well, we did a very short study and realized that what the issue actually was. Um, was the fans that exhaust the carbon monoxide in the parking garage um, were not uh, regulated by anything. They just ran, uh, they turned on and turned off in a, in a cycle, and they were not on VFDs. So what we were able to do is recommend, by looking at that, they were able to recommend that, hey, if we can not necessarily not use the fans le you know, any more or any less, but just use them at different times, um, and basically flatten out uh, the, the demand uh, that they're putting on the grid, uh, we can reduce our uh, energy costs. So not only did we they reduce their electricity usage, they also were able to shave off uh, that peak demand, and it ended up saving them 30% in their electricity bills going forward. And you can see kind of a graph here of what uh, you've got these little spikes at the bottom, which are the fans, and then the overall use of uh, in the offices. And if you add that together, those little spikes on top of that um, base demand is what put them over uh, the top on that peak demand. So uh, really just trying to figure out not so much what you're using, but when you're using it to uh, to lower the de overall demand curve uh, to the utility. Now, once we've identified where we might have some waste, now we want to go to what are the biggest areas we can go look for uh, problems. Uh, we have found that compressed air systems in most manufacturing facilities tend to be one of the largest consumers of energy. Uh, this is your compressors uh, needed to compress that air to not only uh, power your equipment, uh, uh, there's safety aspects involved with it, uh, as, well, as well as that energy. So um, we can look at air leaks being somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of total air or total air uh, capacity that is produced uh, is in those leaks. So what you might say is on a typical day, 25% of the energy you're putting into those air compressors is just going to waste due to leaks. Now, on top of that, we think about, hey, what are all the other, if you're paying for a gas or manufacturing a gas, um, you're just basically money is leaking right out of that tank or out of that hose. Uh, if you're leaking a, uh, a gas like oxygen, nitrogen, argon, acetylene. So um, lots of different ways you can look for that um, or lots of different reasons you can think about wanting to find those leaks. Now, how exactly does this work? Uh, it's basically a sonic, ultrasonic imager, a bunch of tiny microphones uh, that can triangulate where a high frequency noise or a leak is coming from. So you can see a real small example on screen here, it paints it with a colored screen so you can very quickly and easily tell where your leak is. So this allows you to find the leaks incredibly fast as opposed to using maybe um, a set of, you know, might, might have some headphones on with a, a wand a microphone on a wand, or you might have uh, soapy bubbles, uh, which can take a really long time, uh, not to mention having to get into a lift, climb up on a ladder to be able to look for that. Here you can do it for from hundreds of feet away. So a good example of where this might go, uh, the good company, uh, Genie, had um, allowed us to do a, a study with them. Uh, to prove out how effective this was. And you can see we did, we took one of our power or energy analyzers, did a seven day uh, study before we started. They have four compressors and you can see here at the top, uh, basically what your, uh, when your compressors run, uh, you had basically a real base load uh, that was being pushed out by compressor four, ran pretty much nonstop. Now, after we uh, found a bunch of leaks, we ran a, a leak survey, found a bunch of leaks, went in, did some repairs, came back in, ran the same, say, same seven day study. And you can see there that compressor four almost doesn't turn on at all anymore. Uh, very, very, um, you know, went in and found up, we recovered an estimate of 25.7% of the compressed air capacity. So over a quarter of the air uh, was being lost, the compressed air was being lost just after a few uh, quick fixes. And they calculated that out to be somewhere close to $49,000 in uh, electricity cost uh, that they saved uh, from that small test. 
Now, as we move away from the new science around leak detection, we can also get into how do we identify other anomalies, non-contact from a distance. I think a lot of people are very familiar with thermal imaging, but this is a, a still a very, very great, very, very good technology uh, for finding um, and identifying uh, these energy loss anomalies. So we think about any kind of mechanical friction produces heat, any kind of me mechanical friction on aligned belts, shafts, um, that's just more power that those motors are having to push through uh, that friction. Uh, electrical loads uh, heat when they're resistive. If we think about an electric stovetop, that's just put them, the higher you turn that knob, that's more electricity, more current you're pushing through that resistor, it heats up. So if we're seeing any kind of electrical connections that are hot, um, that is typically an electrical um, an resistive load that's requiring more power to push through that, uh, not only damaging the equipment as well, and then if you think about uh, our HVAC anomalies, simply just heat loss. So if you've got insulation damage, um, if you're leaking air, uh, your air handling systems aren't uh, working properly, your uh, air conditioner isn't cooling, your heating system is not heating properly, uh, they're just wasting energy right there. So uh, Fluke still offers, um, you know, thermal imagers change constantly. Fluke offers a really great uh, selection of mid to low end cameras that can be uh, are perfectly sufficient to find these kind of problems, uh, starting with our TIS 75 that includes asset tra um, asset tagging. So it's easy to organize and categorize uh, all these images you're taking all the way down to our PTI 120 pocket thermal imager uh, for being able to pull out, pull out of your pocket, take a quick image. Uh, also in, incorporates the asset tagging to categorize those images. Uh, but a really, really great and effective way uh, to look for those energy losses. Finally, if we're going to look at mechanical wear, uh, we want to be able to identify where that wear is coming from, predict failure in the future, and then correct what we can correct. So what we typically look at is we have kind of a four, three to four step process here where we might initially check conditions with uh, a pen tester, say the 805 FC. Uh, you can see here on the, the very left image, they're checking very quickly, just a, I think it's about a five second test on that uh, piece of rotating equipment. And it's gonna identify, hey, is it running smoothly? Or is there any kind of vibration or noise that would, think, that would identify uh, bearing wear, uh, misalignment or unbalance? Now, if we see a problem, we have we can go a step further with a Fluke 810 vibration tester. This is going to take multiple measurements on the piece of equipment, and it's a, going to diagnose what the actual problem is. Now, once we've diagnosed the problem, if it's a bearing or clearance issue, we know we've got to um, predict when we can predict when it's going to fail, and we can go in and decide when we're going to actually tear down that, repack those bearings, or replace the motor. Uh, not necessarily immediately, but uh, you know you might be able to wait till your next turnaround to get that taken care of. If you can predict, hey, you've got another 12 to 18 months of life on this tool. Now, things like alignment and balance, we can fix those. So, Fluke offers some alignment correction tools. Uh, the Fluke 830, uh, which is a shaft align tool, and the Fluke 835, which is a belt align tool, both pictured here. So we can go in and um, make sure we're removing any kind of belt misalignment um, that would create wear and friction and have a, a motor have to work a little bit harder to power through that. And then shaft alignment, which uh, has been shown to um, create quite a bit of damage over time if it's allowed to uh, uh, continue. So finally, we've introduced several, four different types of solutions here, uh, four different classes of products to go after uh, your inner, to identify your energy losses and to try to correct them um, to provide a more stable uh, or a sustainable working environment. We, we know you don't wanna go at this alone. So what we can show you here is uh, Fluke is partnered with Granger uh, to provide um, to provide services and provide recommendations and to help you understand what tools are um, going to be valuable in your situation. Every plant's different, every business is different. What are the needs you're looking for? What are the corporate goals you're trying to achieve? Uh, Fluke and Granger can help work together on that. So we have uh, 48 
regional sales managers, territory sales managers at Fluke uh, that are dedicated to a uh, geographic territory in the lower 48. Um, all of these sellers are aligned to your Granger account managers and national account managers and um, would be more than happy to bring uh, bring us in to talk about what your needs are and how we can help. So we encourage you uh, to contact your local fluke seller or contact your local Granger seller uh, to bring uh, your fluke seller in um, and not only talk about these tools, but all the other ones uh, fluke can provide as well. So again, uh, my name is Aaron Woody. I am a strategic account manager uh, with fluke and it has been my pleasure to introduce some of the energy sustainability uh, and energy savings tools uh, that Fluke has on the market today. I hope you enjoyed the show and have a wonderful rest of your day.